everybody in life gets one chance. Everybody, dark, fair, otherwise. The fair people get the chance earlier than the dark people. Why do Indians desire fair skin? Is it a sign of racism? It has to do with colonialism. Uh, it has to do with, uh, you know, the Aryans coming to India and taking over the subcontinent. It has to do with, uh, you know, caste relationships of power. Is it a legacy from history? Why does a woman use a lipstick? Makes her look more attractive, makes her feel confident and uh, makes her feel good about herself. If a fairness cream makes you feel better, uh, there, is, there is no harm, I think. Or is it simply a concept of beauty? A slew of factors drive the obsession for fair skin in India. Its booming skin whitening industry has long capitalized on women's desire to be fair. In recent times, even men are spending big to lose a few shades of tan. I'm Fauzia Ibrahim. On this edition of 101 East, we ask, can there be fairness in India without fair skin? Chantal Cho reports. India, a nation of more than one billion people with a rich variety of culture and tradition. But many people across the country have one thing in common, the desire for fair skin. It's a value that the mass media promotes widely, perpetuating the idea that fair is lovely. In Bollywood films that pull in the crowds, female stars almost always have fair skin. Even dark parts of this country like uh, South India, you know, uh, they, you, even they prefer the fair girls. As a matter of fact, the darker you are in an area that you uh, live in, the fairer uh, your aspiration is. That aspiration has created a massive market for skin whitening creams in India, from single sachets worth 10 cents to expensive jars costing more than $100 each. Skin whitening cream advertisements fill the airwaves, promoting fair skin as beautiful. The fair girl is desirable. She attracts attention and envy. And beneath every dark-skinned girl is fair skin waiting to be unveiled. But increasingly, ads like these raise the question, fair and lovely. are they unfair and ugly? I think it marginalizes other uh, forms of appearance. Uh, women who are not fair, for instance, are made to feel inferior. Yeah. It begins to govern, uh, you know, the way people look at themselves. Someone who's dark in this society might find it difficult to, to have a positive uh, self-image. Top model Angela Singh Bias is dark-skinned, or dusky as they say in India. Her career has taken off internationally, but in her home country, she is still overlooked by some advertisers. The reason? Dusky women are seen as sexy and sensual, so they think her skin tone doesn't project the right wholesome image. And when Angela was offered an endorsement deal for a skin whitening product, she made a stand and turned down the money. I didn't think it was sending out the right message um, to especially younger children that there's a certain construct or certain color that's better than others. I, I just, I personally didn't want to endorse that. You can sit there and really be angry at this whole dusky versus fair, or that's just not the look they're looking for, and that's it. That's part and parcel of the industry. It's true that uh, till about very recently, uh, you know, dark-skinned women didn't make the cover of many magazines. There is a gradual shift. It will like, probably take years before the, 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 the mainstream people or the conventional thinking changes. To connect with the masses, advertisements need to have broad appeal. Palat Kaka, a leading ad director and social commentator, refuses to produce any whitening cream ads. And he says he doesn't cast talent based on their skin tone. But at the end of the day, Palat still has to give the clients what they pay for. That's the criteria, so all my clients will specify that, that she should be fair. But you might actually pick somebody much darker than her because she turns you on. You, you shoot them and then you treat them and then you also do a makeup which is a couple of shades lighter than what they actually are. For three decades, Fair and Lovely, manufactured by Hindustan Unilever, 
has been the leading woman's fairness cream in India. The company's advertising showed dejected women with dark skin snubbed by men or employers. But after using the cream, they find love or glamorous jobs. The ads seem to touch a raw nerve. Reports estimate nearly two-thirds of Indian women apply skin lightening creams daily. The ads show that, you know, there is a, actually this fair, fairness in, that is trapped inside you and you need the fairness cream to sort of peel off all the layers and to release this, you know, new fair view, you know. Uh, so I think they're very insidious and they, they kind of play on a lot of anxieties that uh, women have about, uh, you know, their complexions. Insidious or not, it's a message that sells. India's skin lightening cream market is booming growing almost 18% a year. Market research group AC Nielsen estimates that growth this year will hit 25%, with Indian consumers spending almost half a billion dollars on products and services to make themselves fairer. Surveys show they do not just attract female customers. More and more men use fairness creams as well. The men's are more inquisitive to know what, the, what is better than them, than the women's, as I see nowadays. Like, they want to know which is the best for them, and they don't see the cost. In 2005, the Indian cosmetic company, Imami, launched Fair and Handsome to target the male market. It engaged Bollywood superstar Shah Rukh Khan to endorse it. Sales figures skyrocketed, growing 45% each year, and Imami became the market leader in men's fairness creams. But it also brought about a renewed wave of controversy. Imami Fair and Handsome, dunya ki number one fairness cream for men, ab Fairness creams is, is, is a part of, uh, you know, that in, entire package. So today, both for men and women, increasingly looking a particular way, or behaving a particular way or owning something is tied up with the idea of being a worthwhile human being. <laughs> but Imami director <laughs> Mohan Goenka disagrees. It's all about meeting the inherent needs of the consumers. See, there's no racism. Why does anyone want to get tanned in Europe? Entire Southeast Asia, you go to China, you go to uh, uh, Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand or Korea, it's all whitening creams. So. If you feel nicer, some people in India also want to get tanned. So what do you say that? You, know, you can create controversy out of anything. Alongside Shah Rukh Khan, Imami also hired actor Naku Mehta for his fair and handsome cream ads. He says although he doesn't use fairness creams himself, actors in such ads get an unnecessary beating from critics. At the end of the day, an actor is also someone who is you know, earning his bread and butter and he goes out and does things uh, which of course he must believe in. Imami fair and handsome. But just because a Shah Rukh Khan uh, says that uh, buy a fairness cream, that doesn't mean we should get morality involved. At times in Naku's career, being fair has even worked against him. Roles do get limited because, uh, you know, just because I'm fair, I, uh, the first thing uh, you'd be thought of is in a romantic film, but uh, as an actor, I want to sort of expand, you know, myself and not just play that. I want to play stuff which is uh, 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 an edgy guy, someone who's who has grey shades. This indie experimental film allowed Nakul to do exactly that, but he doesn't expect the change to come anytime soon in India's mainstream film industry. All the negative roles will go to someone who looks slightly darker slightly edgier, which I personally don't agree with, but uh, that's how our industry functions. It comes from the society. As, as a society, I think, uh, you know, uh, we all love the fair skin. And that's apparent in how it is common to see Bollywood dance sets where the Indian hero is complimented by a bevy of seductive white women. The media uh, draws on what is already there in society in terms of what people aspire for uh, in terms of beauty and fairness. But it certainly uh, uh, amplifies that. It's not going to go away and I certainly don't think that, uh, you know, either banning fair fairness creams or trying to uh, 
regulate ads is going to do a, a great deal to change things. I think where uh, we need to change things is to create debate and discussion in society. The debate continues after the break. We'll look at how a fair-skinned Indian girl is determined to get even fairer. I knew I am fair, but then this tone irritates. You know, whenever I look into the mirror, I think I've become dark. We visit a beauty parlor in South Asia's biggest slum. 90% of my customers are here for skin whitening. These days, people want to be fair even if they're poor. And we'll look at how skin whitening works and some of the hidden dangers. Stay with 101 East. The desire for fair skin in India is said to go a long way back in history. The age-old caste system created a hierarchy of social classes. Fair skin was associated with Brahmins and aristocracy, people who didn't do menial labor. Doing menial labor meant when uh, going to the fields and sort of getting your skins dark. So it's one of those things that have been part of Indian society for hundreds of years. On top of that, Britain also influenced the subcontinent on many levels for more than 300 years. From trade in the early 17th century to nearly a hundred years of colonial rule that ended in 1947. Many people believe social perceptions from those days remain. Perhaps the most obvious, equating fair skin with success, power and all things desirable. India has been invaded by a series of uh, races and, and tribes that were uh, fairer than the inhabitants, the original in inhabitants of this country. And the last lot were the British, who were the fairest of them all. So the vanquished want to be like the victors, and the most obvious difference between the vanquished and the victors is actually their colour. The very construct of beauty uh, has to do with relationships of power. I mean, probably if, uh, you know, Africa had colonised the world, then, you know, dark would have been beautiful rather than fair would have been beautiful. Right from the time that a baby is born, the first question that, uh, you know, uh, the, the family will ask is is, is, is she fair or dark? The impact of such values can be seen at St. Catherine of Siena Orphanage and School in Mumbai. Many of these children used to roam the streets, homeless, hungry and abused. But even at this age, an added problem for some of them is being darker than the others. Beneath the fun and games, it's not all fair play. School counsellors and teachers tell us they are very concerned about the complaints of discrimination made by children who have darker skin tones. There is a certain amount of population or of children who would be teasing other children as uh, calling them black. They would call him Kala, which is very derogatory for that child. And then the kids uh, find it difficult to adjust with other children. It does have a very uh, negative consequences uh, at a behavioral level, emotional level, psychological level. Child feel very uh, depressed. At the same time, child uh, it does affect the child's self-esteem. And those values are passed on through generations. You know? Such values are evident on Shadi.com, one of the world's largest online matrimonial services. It has 20 million registered users, three quarters of them Indian. Many profiles indicate a preference for spouses with fair skin. Men typically indicate that they're looking for someone that, that's fair, and that, that could be almost as high as 60%. Women are much more liberal in who they're looking to marry. They, they indicate uh, much, much higher degrees of interest in people that are compatible with them, common interests, people who they can share their life with. And I met my husband on the real percentage of people looking for fair-skinned spouses could well be higher. The users of Shadi.com are mostly in urban areas where there is internet penetration. Shadi.com Newspapers reach out to greater numbers across India and their matrimonial pages are full of ads using one's fair skin as a selling point. Obviously you have to look good, you have to look fair. If the girlfriend looks bad, people are going to say, Oh, whom are you dating? This chick, you know? It's that way. Deepti Kalani, considered a fair Indian by most standards, wants to be even fairer. 
she is about to further her studies in London and thinks fair skin will help her fit in. It's important to look good because people over there are very fair, you know. I have to stand in that crowd. I don't want to be like, you know, neglected or something. I feel I'm dark. Like many people have told me I am not. This is proper Indian color. But then I feel, no, I have. I've become darker, you know, gradually while traveling and going out in the sun and not taking proper care. We joined Deep Tea on a visit to a dermatologist for a consultation on skin lightening treatments. There is no medical condition responsible for this extra color that you're worried about. So my interpretation is that you only have a bit of tanning of skin. Yeah. All right. Dr. Sushil Tahiliani recommends that Deep Tea use creams to return to her original shade and maintain it by applying sunblock. He says it's not just sun exposure that darkens complexion. It also happens when skin is sensitive to certain types of medicine, cosmetics and fragrances. Along with creams, Dr. Sushil's clinic offers three other ways of skin lightening. Microdermabrasion, also known as skin polishing, chemical peels and laser toning. But he warns there are hidden dangers when practitioners are not properly trained. You could land up getting darker than normal color or you, you could land up losing all your color. You could also see some cases where you see some secondary infection happening and patient getting pus boils. I have seen cases where people have come with scarring on the skin and those scars are permanent. So this is a result of? Result of over enthusiastic peels or peels which are done by people who are not properly qualified or using products which are made locally with not very good quality control. Now men want all grooming products. Quality control is something Imami, the makers of Fair and Handsome, insist is a priority. More or less they are tested before they are launched and uh, on, on large scale. So on, on all skin types these creams work. That's how they come to the market. But there are always sensitive skins, you know. So maybe some ingredient may react on someone. But that doesn't mean that the creams have side effects. Most skin whitening creams are said to work by suppressing the production of melanin, the pigments responsible for dark color in the skin. Their ingredients include vitamins and sunscreen. If you are exposed to sun or some, some ultraviolet rays, these ingredients basically disperse those melanin and you look whiter. There are no properly formulated studies to prove that they are effective. Probably they are working on human mind's weakness to look fairer and to have evenly toned smooth fair skin. And despite what the TV commercials show, the public is reminded to be realistic. Maximum so These fairness creams can uh, get you to your original color. So, how you were born, nothing beyond that. It's not just the richer city dwellers who are spending money to make themselves fairer. Even in slum areas like this, there are many beauty parlors tucked away in nooks and crannies offering skin whitening services. Taravi in Mumbai is the largest slum in South Asia. Here, quality control for skin lightening creams involves a simple test. Hello, ma'am. You offer skin whitening services? I have four or five skin whitening products. I test them on myself, my daughter, and my friends to ensure they're fine. I don't use new products on customers because this is my business. I have to be careful. Saroja Chelapa has been operating in Taravi for 25 years. Many women here are prepared to put aside $5 a month for a skin whitening facial. Locals say there are more than 100 such beauty parlors in the area. Saroja claims her reputation is up there among the best. She sees some 20 customers a day and has never received any complaints about her products. There are a lot of other parlors where things go wrong, but there's no point naming and shaming them because they are just making a living.
If something goes wrong with my product tomorrow, I don't want them to bat off me either. In places like Taravi, it is perhaps harder to regulate the types of creams used. The main concern is some of them may contain excessive doses of bleaching chemicals that destroy pigment-producing cells, causing the skin to lose its color. We had to fix this problem a number of times. Sometimes we are successful, sometimes we have to take help of surgical methods to cover those white patches. In India today, there is a growing consciousness that the obsession for fair skin is anything but fair. But it's a value entrenched in history, and any change so far is only skin deep. If there is a rising consciousness, it's an intellectual rising consciousness. It is not a mass consciousness. You know, everyone is supposed to package themselves uh, you know, to look desirable, smell desirable, uh, to, to, to conform to, uh, you know, ideas of uh, beauty, of success. Of, uh, and, and I think, uh, you know, this is a very important way through which, you know, power is exercised over all of us, you know. Some say it is the power of the mass media through pop culture and advertising. Others say the media merely reflects what people desire in the first place. It's dark skin. I don't want that. I do feel like India has a colonial hangover. So a part of it is racial overtones, but my biggest concern is the message is sending younger children who are not yet fully developed to make a sort of well-educated decision. So with the skin color divide, it's bad versus good. And it's, not, it's no pun, but it's not that black and white.